Hello, folks, and welcome back to Chris Wyatt Reports. This is Chris live in central Pennsylvania. It's Sunday, the 23rd. Oh, oh and there goes the load shedding. <laughs> oh, my goodness. As soon as we go live, we see the load shedding take place. Um, wow. Um, you actually got to see it happen there, folks. So, <laughs> geez. Uh, hopefully, she'll get back here in a second. But, um, wow, that's uh, South Africa. You got to love it, folks. You absolutely got to love it. So, oh, you're back? Are you back? Yes, we have load shedding. Just give us a five se- five minutes. We can still talk. Okay. Yeah. No. That's that's okay. Let me get you back on the screen. Like to get on the <laughs> wow. That's that. That's 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 almost like ESCOM planned it on purpose. The moment we went live. But folks, uh, thank, <laughs> thanks, folks. Thanks for tuning in. We've got Crystal Jackson on the other end dealing with load shedding. She'll be with us in just a second there. And uh, welcome back. Uh, Crystal, of course, um, is um, it's kind of a rugby expert. We're going to talk to her about why she knows about rugby, what she's done in rugby. Talk about the spring box and uh, what's coming ahead for the World Cup and about the, the team selections and that sort of thing. People on the outs, all that stuff. And then we'll probably uh, touch briefly on her recent health scare and um, also Giselle's concert, which uh, her husband, you might have heard of that, Oak. Uh, he goes by the name of Monty, Monty Jackson. You know that guy, um, one of my favorite performers there. So, um, Crystal, we don't have any light, but we can hear you. How are you to, doing today? I'm doing, I'm doing very well. I have a problem with the legs a little bit with the uh, rheumatoid arthritis, but nothing I can handle. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow morning, so we'll know then. But otherwise, I'm fine. Perfect. And you? Well, I'm, I'm, a, a I'm okay, but I see that you're doing your best to keep the medical practice in, in profitability in South Africa. Uh, I pay their bills every month. <laughs> I do. <laughs> well. Listen, was your... Uh, your problem with your gallbladder was it South Africans' fatty foods? <laughs> no, 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 no. We have, folks, off air, uh, Crystal and I were talking about um, when I went to hospital, the only time I've ever been in hospital. That was back in 2010. It was a consequence of being Anglo Saxon, living in deserts, and having, uh, oh. I, yeah, slightly, I guess, too much minerals in my diet. I'm not sure, but it's it's not a, it's not an uncommon occurrence for light skinned people like myself, you know, pink because yeah. I'm not white. To, oh. That happened. What happened was I had, I had a whole bunch of gallstones in my gallbladder, and one of them decided it wanted to leave, and it got stuck in the bile duct. And so my stomach oh. tried to kick it out for 24 hours. I was on a flight from Joburg. I had eaten at News Cafe at OR Tambo, and I thought maybe I got food poisoning from there because that had a similar situation. Turns out it wasn't food poisoning. It was a gallstone. So when I finally got to the States and then flew from Atlanta on a flight to D.C. and then drove myself to the hospital with my hire, um, I checked in, and then they, they saw that it was with an ultrasound that it was uh, gallstones. And I said, how do you treat that with, with ultrasound? And she laughed. She said, we treat that with surgery. I said, well, I have a flight in two days. I, I won't consent. Oh, you'll consent. You'll consent. I said, no, I won't consent. You'll consent. Uh, I consented. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah, there we go. We got some, she's on the generator there, folks. There's the lovely Crystal Jackson. Look, I, I've never asked this. I presume you go by Jackson because that's not, that's not your, your previous name. I usually, uh, previously, I went by Crystal Z code. Now I just go by Crystal Z Jackson. Okay, just want to make sure we're straight. We don't want to slight anybody there. I mean, we don't want to start a we don't want a marital discord in the Jackson house. So we also don't no, want to offend no, our guests. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Crystal, look, this has been a long time in coming. You and I have been talking about you coming on this program since before I I met Monty the first time and you last year in August. So here it is finally. I mean, you're always, you know, you're so selfish with your your health needs, taking care of yourself. I mean, you know, it's it's about damn time you get on here. But seriously. So listen, I I don't think a lot of people know you. You're not a celebrity. So let's talk a little bit about so so rugby. I mean, you and I talked rugby. I was like, damn, this lady knows rugby. So so what's what's your tie to rugby and, and why do you know so much about it? Uh, I don't know why I loved rugby. My mom says I was two, three years old and I ran around with a rugby ball, but I'm not a player, so um, I can't do a man's job. And then I, I, when my brother's uh, son was born, I was 16 years old, and um, there goes XCOM again. I'm sorry. It's quite all right. We're, uh, we're accustomed to XCOM. It is, it is the thorn in yeah. everyone's side. Uh, so when he was born and I was 16 years old, um, I was a, a huge uh, James Small fan and Donny Harbour. That was one of the best, or to me, the best players that you could find because Donny Harbour was one of the best uh, centres that he could run, he could play a run a ball flat, he could make tries, he could uh, score tries, he could kick, he could do anything. But he wasn't a utility player. 
he was a specialist in his position. So I fell in love with the game and I've got this thing about talent because I'm not talented. Everything I do, I work for. I am an, a mechanical engineer, but I had to uh, go and learn to do that. And then I just tried to, I worked hard to do to uh to perfect it but i don't have this talent like marnie like my husband he's a, a, a immaculate singer i don't have that talent so the thing is where rugby came in was this talent that people had to do this amazing thing on a field and i just wanted to be behind the scenes i don't want to play the rugby because i can't do a man's job but as good as he does it but and then i i, I fell for the game because of the talent and what they do. Because it's 80 minutes of of being pushed around, being hit, being uh, tackled, running. And um, can we do that? We can't. So I find well, it right. I, I got to disagree with you, Crystal. I think women do that quite well. It sounds like a night out at the club. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Isn't that what happens at the club? Chasing around, running around, grabbing, tackling? I mean, last time, it's been a while since I've been to the club, but that's that's my recollection. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know the experience of the club. I don't go to that. <laughs> I think, and then, when, as he grew, he grew older, my brother's son, and he um, felt, because he was with me all the time. So when I watched rugby or I went and I, because I went from my RB level one, two, and three, uh, when he was about nine, when I was 19, he was about three. So he w- was there all the time. And and seeing him loving the game, because I love the game so much, he was even the same. He will he will, he will die a Sharks player because I loved James Small. That's the impact that I had. And I think sport brings people together. So the only thing is I love sport overall. I just fell in love with, with the game of rugby. Well, listen, you're not a shrinking violet when it comes to opinions and views about rugby, particularly about South Africa's national side, the Springboks. Of course, I'm a huge Bok fan. I have been for many, many years, decades now. So, hey, let's um, let's let's talk a little bit about that while you're in the dark there. <laughs> you know, it's uh, South Africa is one of the most romantic countries in the world. Every night you have a candlelight dinner with your spouse. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, now listen, folks, it's not a bait and switch. I got to say this before we start talking about the box. Um, Crystal did tell me before we went live that Monty would make an on-air appearance on camera, but I'm not going to believe that because I can't see anything. So, you know, <laughs> so it might might be somebody doing an impersonation of Monty's voice there. But anyway, so. No, it will be him, I promise. Can okay. you see me a little bit now? Yeah, I can see it great this now. Is- I've, I've put a little um, <laughs> disclaimer up on the screen telling people load shedding. Please bear with us. So hopefully they'll be understanding. Actually, the, you look great there. You know, where's Monty as? You know, the room you look stunning right there so don't let him hear that okay oh buddy i'm gonna buy some new some more petrol <laughs> is there any petrol to buy <laughs> there is, but i just put in five liters but it just the, the generator just died oh, geez. That was just no he's not here yet <laughs> no no i don't leave till thursday night i'll be in south i'll be in cape town friday night so <laughs> yikes and the closest i'll get to you guys is i will be up in mayerton on the 15th overnighting with a friend um so it's not too far from you guys so let's see if we can you know with donnie you're gonna be with donnie uh no it's not with donnie it's with uh somebody oh. uh Kobus hoffman um who offered me a combination in the past and i had to back out and i felt really guilty you know when people offer so yeah so i mean i, I made sure that I stayed with him and it was the only night that would work. So I'll be flying up from Durban on the 15th and then overnighting in Meriton. I'll drive down from the airport and sit in yes, that we'll pr- horrific traffic at Oratambo Tambo at five o'clock. No, right. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so let's uh, let's let's get let's get into the rugby then. Now that we've had a, um, a your 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 broadcast has been bombed by some celebrity who just had to had to get on camera. Those celebrities are just a, they are attention yeah. hoes, man. They love attention. Those celebrities. <laughs> really, I, you have it on the dot. Really, you do. All right, <laughs> let's get to the rugby. Okay, so hey, listen. Um, You know, I've been to all these World Cups, 2011 New Zealand, 2014 for the women in Paris, 2015 in England, 2017 in Ireland for the uh, women, 2018 the Sevens in San Francisco, 2019 for a month in Japan, 
And then I went to Rugby League World Cup in England last year, which was interesting. Um, you have teams like Papua New Guinea you never see playing, just kind of cool in the, the Cook Islands. Uh, so that was interesting. And then I went to the Sevens World Cup in Cape Town. The only one I missed has been the Women's World Cup in New Zealand, which has become very anti-tourist friendly. Um, they're discovering that with the FIFA World Cup now. They can't sell tickets because nobody wants to yeah. go to New Zealand anymore. But uh, So I've been to all these World Cups, and I absolutely love this stuff. And I will be in France, although I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to pay for this, but I will be in France in September. Uh, the tick, the flight's paid for, so I had to sleep on the side of the road or in a rest stop or something like that. But anyway, but I so. I will do that as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and I, 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 paid for, I'll go. I may have to, I may have to do that. But seriously, okay. So we've seen the Bucks now play against the Wallabies, and a lot of people are excited about the test match. I thought it was good, but there was a lot of room for improvement, but there was a lot of great signs in that game. And then we saw... I don't know. Apparently, the Springboks weren't allowed to leave the locker room for the first 30 minutes of the game against the All Blacks. And people running around saying the All Blacks were so amazing. And to me, it was more like the Springboks didn't show up. I mean, the USA Eagles could have scored 17 points against those Springboks in the first 30 minutes. All right, let's get your take on those first two games. Um, the first game, I was a bit, uh, uh, I wasn't sure, especially with Kurt Lee um, doing the kicking, because it's a, it's a, it's a good, a uh, big game, a, a big thing. So I was, I was a bit skeptical, and when he uh, uh, did that first penalty, I thought, really, we are because then we had the mental uh, um, advantage in the first five minutes. So then I wasn't, I was still skeptical because they call it the B team, but I don't think South Africa has a B team. I think South Africa has great players, and we just have. Rusty's just taking the time to uh, figure out who he's going to play where. So the first, I, I don't think there was a lot of room for improvement in the first game, but if you think of it, it's a team that hasn't played together at all. They put them together in five days. So for for the, the time they had, I think it was a good game. I think they could have scored twice as much if they had two weeks or three weeks more. Um, the second game, I think, was in, they lost it mentally. By the Wednesday, Evans' dad was because I mean it's a team. They, it's a brotherhood. It's not just and they had the thing about New Zealand. So my my uh, um, opinion is uh, when someone when when you have a brotherhood and something and life cuts you, the whole team bleeds, and when the sun shines upon you, the whole team shines. They grow. So I think. It was a sad moment and a, a a mental thing because you're sad. You don't know what to do. Do you have to play? Do you have to go back? Um, do you feel as a as a team player? Can you play because his father just passed away, but I still have mine. And I think that is the knock that we got, but not Eben's fault or his dad's fault. I think as a team and as a brotherhood, they were in um, mourning, and then. They had to stay in the locker room for thirty minutes. That's a down. That's that's a mental kick in anyway. So you don't feel at home anyway. You have to feel at home when you play the best the game you you used to play. So I think it was a mental thing. I don't think it was a physical or a talent thing. <clears throat> well, that's an interesting take, Crystal. I you know uh, I haven't heard a lot of commentators um, reflect much on Evan Etzebeth's father passing and the impact it might have had. Uh, that that may very well be the case for me. It's 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 just it's as if they just weren't prepared, and and I don't know if it's the changing of lineups. But look, I mean, I'm not panicking. Okay, I mean, I, look, I expect the Springboks mm -hmm. to win 100, percent which they never do, but I expect them to win 100. percent But in 2019, when Rossi took over, his first Test match was in Washington D.C., and it was against Wales. I went to that game. It was a miserably rainy day in a third world stadium. It looked worse than any African stadium I've ever been to, RFK. But I was there. And I was very disappointed because all these young debutantes came out there, like Dignanti and other guys came out, and they turned the ball over and gave the game away and let Wales win. Um, and I was not happy. But I didn't get what was going on. Rossi wasn't really caring about the victory. He wanted, he wanted to test and find the right mix and get some bl bloody these players. And we don't have a lot of debutantes now. There's a couple out there. But we also got some very inexperienced Springboks. Look, currently, Arnsey's only played in like 
t- ten matches or something like yeah, that. Right. Was so more skeptical. Right. And Kane and Moody, people are not a lot of people are down on Kane and Moody. He's only got a few test matches, so so there's there, I guess there's some proving ground stuff going on here. But but I I don't like to ever lose to the All Blacks. I take it personally. So that would that kind of <laughs> sucked, you know. But uh, so I think that's where we're at. This test match coming up this weekend, this coming weekend against uh, Argentina. In Argentina, no, no, it's at Ellis Park, excuse me, it's at Ellis Park, isn't it? I think, anyway, but yeah, that test match, um, the next one's in Argentina. But this test match is is kind of a big deal for a lot of guys. I mean, like, Jesse Creel's been kind of left out in the cold. I mean, he's going to have yeah. to get some playing time or he won't make the squad. Also, there's some players that are maybe a little bit on the fringe. There's discussion about that. What, do you, what are you looking for in this match against uh, Argentina? Are you looking for anybody to shine or, or anyone to surprise us? Um, I think... Uh, oh, I wish they could put in. Uh, I think they're going to put in a Zalulu, and um, sometimes he's a bit sloppy. Yeah. Sometimes, but when he's on his game, he's on his game. And I think if he's um, game ready in his mind and he's on that, then I think he can make a lot of meters. He can make a lot of things happen from the back. Most people don't. It's the forwards. It's the forwards. It's the forwards. I know that. But if you have a good back line. Uh, you can't. And uh, Argentina is a running team. They're a running team. They don't. They don't play around. They don't uh, do uh, scrummaging. They don't do. Uh, <clears throat> they do scrummaging, but they don't do those. Pro- they do running rugby. So, and that's what we need. We need. We need. We need running feet at this moment. Well, you know, it's interesting. You talk about Villa de Roo. Villa. I mean, I've had players who are my favorite, and then I shift over time. I mean. Um, Jean de Villiers was my favorite briefly back in the day. I was a big fan of his. Of course, Victor Matfield. Um, I mean, I you know Gio Applin, Applin was even my favorite player for a little while there. He was a fun guy to watch. But it, it changed over time. Dwayne Vermeulen, Eben Etzebeth, really my favorites. But Villy was one of my favorites for a period of time there. And then he developed um, Butterfingers and became irrelevant for a while. But as you said, when, when Villy is on, Villy is on. He's among the best in the world back there. You know, I saw very conflicting analysis of Villa LaRue's performance against the Wallabies. I saw people say that he was, uh, not against the All Blacks, said that he was uh, he played well, and others said he played very poorly. And one of the comments about him playing poorly is how he was run over in a tackle, you know, that, that second try. And my response to that was, Villy came 50 meters from the other side of the field because there was no one there and hit the guy at an angle from the side. The guy is this larger, larger than Villy, running at full speed towards the try line. How does anybody stop that tackle except Jonah Lomu or or Cheslin Colby? <laughs> yeah, it's too large. You can't do a, you can't uh, get a red card for high tackling him because you're always going to high tackle him. He's too short. Yeah. So that's Cheslin Colby. So, but the thing is that I think what I, I don't know. I want to say it because I think rugby. I don't play it. Um, when you have the spotlight on you the whole week. Is Willie going to perform? Is Willie going to do this? Is Willie going to do that? Can you imagine when he goes on field what's in his mind? So he that's why he developed Butterfingers. Because everybody was going on and on and on about he can't uh, catch the ball. He's uh, knocking on. He's doing this. He's doing that. Because that was in his mind all the time. Let the guy go on field and play the game he's, he's been taught to play. Yeah, no, because you're not on that field for 80 minutes, so uh, it's easy for us on the on the sideline for 80 minutes saying, "Listen, you should have done that." How do you know it's going to happen on that rugby field? You don't. Well, and you know, to be fair, it's <laughs> also easier when we're watching it from above and we can see all the way across the 15 players. We can see the gaps. We can see where where someone's open. But when you're on that pitch, <laughs> not so easy. But the thing is that I do believe in, and they can say what they, whatever they want. Whether you're on first receiver or second receiver, you do not have to look for a ball. If you know there's a ball coming out of a rug and you are the first or the second receiver, you don't wait for the ball to come. You know it's going to be there. You're ready. You know that that ball is going to come to you. Or you know when you, you're the one uh, or the scrum, the scrum off getting out of the ruck, you don't look for your first receiver. You have to know he's going to be there. You pass because you know he's going to be Because that's your job. Mm. We don't have to tell any team that you need your first and second receiver to be in line. We don't need to tell them you have gaps because you have to be in line. So you don't have a, a scrum half doesn't have to, he doesn't have to 
Uh, look, he's not supposed to be looking where the next first receiver is. Hmm. He has to play the game the way he plays the game. In the chat, <laughs> CB, who's a, a big, she's got a, by the way, she's got a, a coat hanger in her mouth because she's a cheetah fan. Still smiling about the curry cup. <laughs> so I think she's going to have permanent wrinkles when she takes that, like the Joker. So, but um, she just said that, you know, the thing about Villy is that um, Villy can win the game for you, but can also easily lose game for you when he's off his game. Absolutely. That's, yeah, yeah. That's but true. That's any player. Yeah, that is any player. But, I mean, it, it, it stands out more when it's the last guy that they have to get past. And one of the worst things, I think, in rugby is the, 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 the thing they call a utility player. It's jack of all trades, master of none. You specialize a player from the day he goes out of matric or wherever. Um, you play him in his position. You, he specializes in that position. When last did you see a specialist player? Furida Priya? That's the last time I saw a specialist scrum half. Him and Ron. Uh, oh, we've Pinar. got we've got Ruan Pinar. Yeah, I was going to say Ruan Pinar is brilliant. I mean, Ruan, Ruan Pinar, Pinar did a great job. I, look, I think that. I'm oh, sorry. We get the the because the the, the sound got covered. Up. But I was going to say um, with Ruan Pinar, I think quite frankly, Ninaber should have called Ruan Pinar up for a number ten Absolutely. rather than Elton Yankees. Give me a break. Talk about losing a game for you. <laughs> Yeah, this is my controversy because I don't believe in old legs, but I know about four or five old legs that can win this World Cup, even if it's 15 minutes on the bench, because that's impact. You need the impact. You need the experience. So I know I love young players. I do think that, but I don't believe that you play it under 20 or uh, under 19 and or uh, under 21 in a Springbok game. That pressure is too big. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, yeah, no, Ruan Pinar, I, I can't, I'm like, I was crushed that Franz Sten had to end his career. That was so heartbreaking. That is, um, one of the, don't even, that is one of the, that was one of the the hardest things I've ever, that and James Small's death. Hmm. I, I think he's one of the players, the most versatile players. Like I said, I don't believe in a um, utility back, but he could run a ball flat. He could make running meters with five pe- uh, guys on his back with people moaning about his weight. Yep. Um, he could do that for 80 minutes. When uh, uh, Tenda was um, in 2013, I think, when Tenda was benched and he's a prop, Franz Stein stood up and he, and he took the prop position because his uh, teammate was benched. He always goes and says, um, there's space for a new player, but he's got this specialist and he's he's playing with his heart on his sleeve. Every time he kicks wrong, he's got this mad look on his face. He he's, does. He's playing with his... He looks like he's angry at the ball for not going where it was supposed to go. <laughs> if he's not mad, you know he's not playing anymore. And it's so sad because I heard he had to change his vehicle because of his knee. Yeah. And I think he was one of the players who could have won this absolutely and i I wanted to see him win a third world cup that would have been just oh yeah uh, finish the circle so i'm very sad about very very sad i think it's a great loss for not only south african rugby i think the world is going to miss that kind of talent well i'll tell you you know he's got a rocket launcher oh he does have a rocket launcher yeah he's he's got the bm21 no i um Listen, I'm 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 in a minority, I think, on this, but quite frankly, he's still in form, and I know he didn't have he had a couple. You know, what? you and I'm thinking the same thing. I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping he does. He says about two weeks. Listen, no, my knees fine. <laughs> I'm no, going. No, but I was going to say if Franz is actually gone, and if they're not going to call up Ruan Pinar, uh, this Elton Yankees experiment is not going to go well for the Springboks. It'll cost us a game. Um, me, I don't you know, so. somebody needs to sit down and, and have a conversation with Mornay Sten <laughs> and before we have Elton Yankees. That's what I'm saying. Number ten, Mornay Sten and before Elton Yankees. Already hung his hung up his boots, and the thing is. My opinion, I'm not sure. I've never been there, but I think um, I knew he was in. They call his name came up a few times before he hung up his boots for um, the Springboks, and then all of a sudden he, he said he was retiring, and that makes me scared because that makes me think he's scared that he can't do it, and I don't think he should be. He should be um, wondering if he still can because he can. We all saw it when yeah. the, with the Bulls. There's nothing wrong with his ability. So um, I think most I think most players hang up hang, hang up their boots too quickly because they don't believe in what they still can do. Yeah, well, let's go back to specialization, utility players. You were talking about the contrast there. 
There is one that's, uh, I'd say this is a minor controversy, one that people come up and say, yes, he does a great job. No, he can't do it. You know, one time he's great, one time he's not. And that's one of my favorite players. And that's Damon Willemsey. Damon Willemsey is, um, you know, is he a fullback? Is he a fly half? What is he, you know, um, his all-black game was atrocious. That was bad, but that's not his normal form. He's usually a pretty darn good player, but very disappointing in this game against the All Blacks. What, do you, what are your thoughts on Damon Willemsey in this, in, the, in this utility role? That's the thing. Where do you play? Where it's jack of all trades, master of none. So this week, I have to be a fly half. When I'm a fly half, I have to be able to make a pivotal decision. Do I kick for a line? Do I kick um, a grubber? Do I um, make meters? Do I kick, uh, make the decision to take the penalty? Um, if I kick for the sideline, am I going to get enough meters? Am I going to kick out uh, straight? What am I going to do? And then that's the decision you have to make. So next week, all that pressure is off me. Now I have to run a line from the back. I have to make sure there's no gaps in the back line. I have to make sure that I run the ball from the last meter on the field all the way. So that's my, my problem is why do you play him one week this, one week that? Specialize him in the best because he's got a long kick. He does have a long kick. Does he have specialist kick? Yes, he does. Play him where he is specialized in. Yeah. And he's got speed. He's got speed when Wait, he needs it. You, he, that's the thing. And he, when he gets a gap, he takes it. Yeah. He reads the game and he takes it. Where is he going to play the best? Agreed. On the inside? Or where he can play? Now you leave him at the back. And he gets one or two chances to yeah. make me. That's a fair you, point. Put him, in the, put him in the game where everything is. He can still play from the back. They can switch. That's what you do normally in a good game. You sh you switch. You go this way. That's your game plan. You don't have to tell all over or show the, the world, listen, me and uh, Billy's going to switch quickly. That's what you do. That's how you play the game. Yeah, no, that's a fair so point. So I'd rather be and, and, uh, and switch out with one of my own players on my own terms in our game plan as play a rugby player in the wrong position. Well, let's let me shift the focus here. Um, I have to say, and I've been, uh, I mean, it's not criticism and it, it's a little critical, but I think it's honest. And, and that's um, one of the players who was my favorite for several years there. Uh, I thought he was past it, you know, past it, as people like to say. I thought he was past it. and But his game against the Wallabies was unbelievable and he's in form. And that, of course, is Dwayne Vermeulen. What are your thoughts on that? Is Dwayne back? Oh, my goodness. He was a monster against the Wallabies at all i think that is a machine um he's like the i think he's like everybody uh talks about even Smith as being the new bucky sporter um but i think um you i don't think you're the next player i think the roots are the same as skull i think Dwayne has the same roots he plays he goes on he plays the game and if he doesn't bleed, he didn't play a game. If he doesn't tackle you hard enough, he didn't play the game. So I don't think Dwayne was ever gone. I think maybe he had a little slip in um, a, an injury or whatever, but I don't think he was ever gone. That guy's a specialist rugby player. He's a specialist uh, eighth man, and I think he's a brilliant uh, captain. He's a brilliant captain in e every every sense of the word. Well, I'd have to agree with that 100% on all counts. <laughs> You know, there's another uh, situation going on now where um, Kitsoff, um, we're being told that Kitsoff isn't the number one, but I mean, I'm a Stormers fan, so I take exception to that. Uh, Kitsoff, I uh, it, I think, you know, when they talk about Ox and Shea and, and, and being injured and Kitsoff, almost as if, you know, it's, 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 we've lost something. We haven't lost anything right. when Kitsoff is on the pitch. It's as good or better than uh -huh. Ox. Yeah. No, I think, I think Kitsoff is one of the best uh, props we have. I really do. Um, and I think um, he's he's if you if you watch him play, watch his face. He knows exactly when he's going to push you over. He knows it. He reads the game. He knows his strength. He knows his uh, ability. So if you watch him go and watch him play, his face says it all. If you analyze if you analyze a game and you see this little grin, you know he's gonna he's gonna run you over now. He's ready for this rugby game. So I don't think we should say that we've lost kids. Okay, well, no, that's 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 why. <laughs> no, I, I I don't think so either. I mean, again, I'm a Stormers fan, although he's no longer Stormer, so I'm kind of angry at him now. He's going to Ulster, yeah. which I, 
I assume Dwayne's going to stay at Ulster. I don't know if he's leaving. Um, or no, is he coming back to the Bulls? Is that what happened? What happened? Dwayne, mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I know people have this thing about, uh, especially South African players going overseas. But the thing is, what what everybody needs to, what I think they have to realize is, it's a, it's another hemisphere. the the um, The climate is different. the 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 conditions are different. They are next to the field when they have to go on. They are on a on a, a cycling bike to keep their legs warm. I mean, it's in the winter. It snows. What better uh, rugby experience do you need than getting a young man on the field in those conditions? Their legs, their core, their play, their stepping, everything gets better. So why would you um, ask them not to go to improve for one season just to improve and learn from another point of view? I think it's a very good thing. Look, I don't disagree, and and I'm not one of those people that has. Number, first off, uh, Saru's rules about you know 30 test matches, uh, or you can't play for the Springboks unless you play for South. That's nonsense. That that's irritating. And South Africa is one of the few countries that actually plays South Africans on its team rather than New Zealand playing all Pacific Islanders. You know, actually play South Africans. Yeah. So so I mean, so I that's a stupid rule. But as far as overseas, I've never begrudged anyone. I'm just I'm, I'm being facetious because I'm a huge Stormers fan, yeah, and I and I and I want the Stormers <laughs> to win the URC, not Ulster, not someone else. No, but uh, the, the the thing is that I've always said is that people have to understand that players in South Africa don't get paid peanuts; they're making nothing. And so when we lose, um, we, we lose uh, Faf de Klerk and, and Peter Steph Dutoy disappear for three or four years in Japan. They're making a living, raising money in the short I athletic think- career they have for themselves and their family for their future. But if you look at Japan rugby, it's an experience. They, oh, yeah. they learn. So I would rather say it's not only for the money, it's for the experience. It's to get back as a better player because mm. none of those players, and that's my opinion, I don't think one South African player is going overseas to never play in the Springbok team again. They go to a better themselves to be the best Springbok rugby player they can be. And that's my opinion. I don't think they go there to be um, to get more money or what. Maybe if that is the case, but that's not how I've seen it at all. No, absolutely. But I tell you, one of the best things as a South African rugby fan that happened is with uh, the teams going into the URC, four teams instead of just the Kings and the, and the Cheetahs, having four teams there now because we get to see URC action and we can still see all those South African teams plus all the South Africans playing for the European sides. And you see different play because it's not the same game plan because it's not the same conditions. Well, one thing I will definitely be adamantly opposed to if Damien Willem say – signs with a Irish team or something like that. I would be very angry because because all the Northern European sides do is kick the ball all the time. It's like, <laughs> God, it's so boring. Tennis, it's just a little bit of tennis. <laughs> yeah, it's like table, like ping pong, ding, 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 badminton. <laughs> That's what they do. And the thing is, I think there should have been a rule that after the third kick, it's you call an Afrikaans, it's called drive, drive things. That's what you call it. I think after the third one, you should say, "Listen, let's." It. What they did with the varsity cup, they they made the um, penalty two, um, two points, and they made the conversion three to motivate them to play more, to ma- to play running rugby, to score more tries. So let's motivate them not to <laughs> not to kick so much and um, play more running rugby. After the third one, give them a penalty. There you go. So uh, CB, <laughs> CB pointed, or because uh, I, I, I corrected myself and she also corrected. Um, yeah, Dwayne Vermeulen is leaving Ulster. He signed with the Bulls, if I'm not mistaken, Dwayne Vermeulen. Um, oh, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> Nick Muller wants your thoughts on Andreas Becker as a Bulls assistant coach. Any thoughts on that? This one I just thought about yesterday. You know what? He, dis- he disappeared. And I have to be honest, Andreas Becker was not a bad player. He was a good player, he was a fun rugby player, he was a team player. And um, uh, he was always, he, he, was a, he was a very, very good player. As I said, I love rugby, I love, um, uh, uh, I love being in the, in the box. I love being the coach, I love be, doing that. But I don't, I will never be as good 
a rugby coach as any rugby player because they know it. So I think if he's going to do the forwards, I think it's going to be a very good thing. I really do think he's got a fresh mind. He hasn't been in rugby. He hasn't been in the turmoil of uh, of the news and he's not playing good enough or he's not. I think he's got a fresh start and I think it's going to be a brilliant thing. Well, speaking of brilliant things, Crystal, we've got you talking rugby today. I think I'm going to talk my, my viewers' ears off on rugby tomorrow on this program. Skulk Brits. No way. way. No way. way. Brilliant. No, he was, uh, uh, he was a um, winger. Skulk Brits started out as a winger. Well, he's he's one and of those guys that could qualify as a, a utility player, you know, that we're talking about. Yeah, so. I'm not a utility player. What they did, there's a difference. There's a difference. They converted they did him. The same they converted him. They converted him into a hooker, one of the best in the world. The same they did to um, 10 uh, Beast. Yeah. He was the flanker, and he turned out to be one of the world's best props. So yeah, I think that is the difference. Your coach takes you and he says, listen, I see you because they see things we don't. Or when you're a coach, you see things and um, you want to play center, but you're a much better eighth man. You just don't know how to play the game. You put him on and he specializes as an eighth man and you've got a brilliant player. So P.S. Priest was a wing as well and he, he, was, he ended up as an eighth man with a... Uh, um, who could, could run 100 meters in under, under nine seconds. So, I mean, it's a that that I I agree with a utility back. I don't. Well, that's 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 an interesting point. You have players that in their youth develop skills at a certain position. They were good at it, but a team needed someone to step up and fill a gap, and they get converted. And people forget. And a few years later, like look at that guy run. He is fast for a hooker. Well, he was a wing a few years ago. <laughs> No, that's a good point. Okay, so speaking of speaking of you know, okay, so you're you're, you're kind of excited. I got Skulk Brits tomorrow, but I'm also a Velvicious fan. And on Tuesday, I've just confirmed Jacques Borg will be on my program. No way. Way. Why do you always meet these people? I'm gonna watch. <laughs> I'm gonna tune in. <laughs> well, I do have some South Africans that are just serious rugby fans. Uh, Hank Kloper is one of them who reach out to and and I think they just pester these rugby players until they give in and do interviews with me. So, but I mean, look, I've had Victor <laughs> Matfield, Stransky, Nasbota, um, you know, Flock Silliers, uh, Henneke Meyer, Jonathan Kaplan. Uh, just the list goes on and on. It's been really cool. Um, so tomorrow, Skulk Brits, Tuesday, okay. Jacques Borger. I'm looking forward to it. Get Rossi on so that Rossi can give me a place in the team. <laughs> well, I like to get Rossi on, but the problem is I probably get Rossi suspended because I get him talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll just mute him and then just let him say, yes, I can do the analyzing on the team. <laughs> yeah. No, no, we, we'll get Rossi to say that. We'll get him on. And when he starts talking about officials, you I'll put it on mute. Him. And I'll be, folks, yeah, this is, I'll, I'll, say I'll, yes. I'll tell people this isn't unprecedented because when I had Trump on, he started talking about elections. I had to mute him. <laughs> yeah, you see, so that's all we do. We that's all we we just unmute him when he says she's part of the team. <laughs> okay, people are starting some crap over here in the chat here about Newlands. Be quiet about Newlands over there. <laughs> oh, okay, that's yeah. a bad thing. Yeah, it's sad. yes, it is sad. I, I did a, I did a TikTok video on that. I went to Newlands when I was there. Uh, this time, and uh, I went down there and I uh, asked if I could take a look around. They let me in, and I walked out to the pitch, and I filmed a, a minute video for TikTok of the state of disrepair of the field and how it looked and everything. And and uh, just it was just kind of sad. That one got fifty two thousand views, unlike Facebook or YouTube, which hides. And my the stuff. thing is, with the two thousand ten soccer World Cup, um, I really appreciate that they did so much. Is they, they put in so much effort for everything. But you know that Newlands is the only, if I have it, I'm, I'm talking on a correction now. Um, I think it's the only field that drains its own water, isn't it, in South Africa? I'm not sure what you mean by that, but but it, it, might, it might be. But I do know it's the oldest it, rugby pitch in South Africa and one of the oldest it, in the world. Somewhere I heard when they were, or when the, the uh, thing was on because, uh uh, over de demolishing it or whatever, they said that it, it, when there's water on the field, there's some kind of something that they do and it, go, it goes away. So I don't know if they filter it or whatever. I don't know if it's true, but if it is, what a loss. 
Well, yeah, it, loss it for, is. Well, and it's it's all about Town. What a loss for for rugby because New Orleans is one of the biggest. Yeah. No, it's all about money. Uh, they want that money. They want that money to pocket from selling that for development. They want to build houses or commercial space there. That's what it's all about. Yeah, no, it's, uh, but I'll tell you what, um, in the meantime, I think they need to go, I don't know, um, up in the high belt or something like that, load up a couple rail. Oh, wait, there's no trains anymore. All the, we can't do that. <laughs> but, yeah, no, okay, no, no rail cars. Put them in trucks, not with foreign truck drivers so they get burned, but put them in trucks yeah. and truck a bunch of topsoil down to Greenpoint, dig up that sand garbage there and plant some proper turf out there. Oh my goodness, Newlands, we are lucky that at Greenpoint we haven't had a lot of injuries in the Sevens World Cup and in all the test matches. It's just what a disaster that pitch is. Oh it is. And you know what they don't what they don't get is you see fifteen players going on a on a rugby field and you say, listen, you have to tackle, you have to do that. Do you know that their legs get sore? It gets hurt. They fall. Their body takes punch more than I think most uh, people in in a sporting because it's a contact sport. So now you don't want to give them a, a good feel, but you want them to perform to the best of their abilities. How do you do that? I can't even take a carpet burn. What a what to say a gravel burn. So, well, Crystal, I mean, to be fair, you're a little, you're 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 a bit small in stature and bit frail. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they, they, I don't, we have to think about the players as well. We want to yeah. we want to tell them what to do, but I think we have to think about them as well. Player safety. That's one of the major drawbacks of Major League Rugby in the United States. Most of the play, fields that they play on are on artificial turf, and we get injuries that are unnecessary. Guys going down. Oh. I mean, uh, Mike Petri, the former scrum half for the USA Eagles, uh, played for the New York team the first couple seasons that they were in the league. Now he's a broadcaster. And I went up to watch them play on a baseball field that was, they drew the line sideways. So, you know, and, and it was artificial turf. And after the game, his legs had turf burns all over him. You know that stuff hurts. And not just that, remember, the, your shoes aren't made for artificial grass. No, that's true. That's true. And you, you get, yeah, then you you get, we, with, with uh, artificial turf, you get a lot of you get a lot of ACL, MCL um, tears, and you also get um, a lot of ankle is, injuries, and you also get some um, some more more knee injuries than you do in natural no turf. Yeah. There's no movement. Your yeah. body was made to move. Your and there's no Plants. movement. And then you get hit. Yeah. And you just, yeah. Hey, folks, you're listening to Chris Wyatt. Africa here on the Indaba Africa channel. My guest today is Crystal Jackson, who is a rugby supporter fan extraordinaire. And we've been promising to do this broadcast for months and we finally got around to it. She's been selfish, taking care of her personal medical issues, always complained about. I mean, it's nothing serious. I mean, like, you know, the last time, you know, I hadn't heard from her, she had a heart attack. I mean, that's, you know, so I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing but a thing. No, but let's, let's seriously, so all, all kidding aside, Crystal. Giselle, um, who is, is is suffering from cancer right now and trying to recover. We had a fundraiser for her. Oh, looks like the power came back on. <laughs> so, so Giselle, um, you know, Johan put together a concert of a benefit, a fundraiser, and Monty agreed to play at that. I think Steve Hofmeyer was there as well. And um, okay. and anyway, and Giselle, who was uh, you know feeling a little under the weather because the chemo, I guess, still got up and performed, but. I guess Monty was late because you went to the hospital. You like had a heart attack or something like that, or is that is that when you had the heart attack? And then tell no, us the story. I had the heart attack two weeks before, and I was in ICU and in um, busy with. Uh, uh, it, what they did was my heart. Uh, I I had a heart attack for twelve. I was I was down for twelve minutes. They started counting down fifteen, fourteen till time of death. So then I opened my eyes, luckily, for some people. And um, so I was in recovery. And the Friday night, we were late because we were waiting for the doctor to release me to go and do the sound for Marnie. And then I went back to hospital. So let me get this straight. So you were late because you were taking care of yourself. Damn it. <laughs> Again? <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, look, that's a trooper. I mean, you know, you you check yourself out of the hospital, you go to the event, and then you went back to hospital. <laughs> I go back, yeah, yeah, I'm I go sure, back. <laughs> I'm sure, your doctors are probably like, uh, okay, you know what? Not not bad because okay. we can double bill this. We we can bill we can bill one day stay as two days because you checked out. <laughs> <laughs> I even have my own room. 
So. Cool. That's <laughs> nice. No, no. <laughs> well, clearly you're not staying at the Charlotte McKexa Hospital. <laughs> no, no, I'm staying at Pretoria East. They're very good to me always. Best doctors I've ever had. So. I'm I'm grateful. Cool beans. No, but uh, but uh, look, all joking aside, you, you have had some health issues and scares in, in the recent past. I mean, uh, we got to know each other, and, and I found you to be a very fascinating, interesting person. I got the feeling you felt the same way about me, but you don't have to answer that. But anyway. <laughs> And um, actually, you know, I, I went to meet Monty, and um, you and I were chatting more than Monty was. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing I always take over the conversation, especially when it's about rugby. <laughs> exactly. That's why we were talking about rugby. So. <laughs> no, but um, it's uh, – and then, then then all these different health things. And so, no, I you reached out to me recently and said, hey, when are we going to do this? And I'm thinking to myself, well, when are you going to be healthy? You know, <laughs> so, here, so here you are. So we're you know, doing it. Go ahead going to be healthy i think it'll be okay yeah yeah i mean that's good enough yeah. right you're okay right that's good enough yeah. yeah these people that got it worse than me so oh that's a good point that's a fair point you know that's the thing you know when i was a young officer in the army and i was in the gulf war um i i wound up in all kinds of circumstances there i i stayed in a luxury apartment complex for a few nights in riyadh because i had to go down there i stayed in buildings then i slept in a hole in the ground where my sand poured on top of me in the middle of the night because it rained i got a cave in on top of me <laughs> obviously i survived so i saw all kinds of circumstances and i saw you know we got food that was cold that that, that was messed up it was old we i had you know like belgian waffles in the middle of the air campaign it was really weird and what I discovered about people, about humans, is that regardless of how good people have got it or how bad, it's in the nature of people to complain about their circumstances, just generally speaking. I think it's not what happens to you, it's how you handle it. Yeah. And you've been talking about Marnie. Um, if it wasn't for him, I don't think I would have been able to handle it that well because um, he's, he's always there. He's always there, like he's here now. Yeah, yeah, I, I, sure I, he's there I, now. Now there's a light we can't see him. Come on, I don't believe it. I don't believe it for a second. There's no Monty Jack. Oh, it's Monty Jackson! Hey! How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, Monty. How's it going, man? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, we're keeping ourselves busy. Okay, well, um, I got a question. How did you wind up being shorter than Crystal when you sat on the bed? You're lower than her. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's more like it. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. I, I'm seeing it in sweater pants and stuff. So, so I, I'm, I'm not sure which side. Uh, uh, what, what is showing on that side? No, so that's why I went like that. So you yeah, <laughs> can see. I'm oh no, we can see you. We can see you just fine. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You don't have the advantage of being able to see what's on the screen. I have that off to the side here. So. Anyway, no, but Monty, um, I, listen, look, uh, not not to, to break away from rugby for a second, but since you're on the screen, you got any performances coming up in the near term anybody might want to know about? Uh, yes, I've got quite a few. Um, I just can't remember where. But I know, <laughs> I know I'm listen, the- listen, the- listen here, Joe Biden. We'll make sure you get there. <laughs> I don't turn around and bump into myself. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> Uh, uh, Israel Traders. Israel uh, uh, Traders. I'm going to uh, the Western Cape again in September, October, and uh, I know. Yes, I got uh, Heilbronn, small places like Heilbronn. I've got uh, in Potchefstroom, Klerkstof, one of those places, uh, and I'm still I'm starting to produce on my new album. Uh, my producer passed away last year. Oh, shame. Uh, I was busy producing my album, so I stopped everything and I asked his his uh, partner in the studio if he will finish the album, uh, which we will finish now. Okay, well that'll be great. Listen, hey, well, before you before you drop off, because uh, um, I'm sure you're probably going to cut out there shortly. But um, Tony Bennett, wow, man, what a life! Yo, yes, yeah. Yeah, that, Tony Bennett. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, iconic performer. I mean, look, and the reason I mention that, folks, if you don't know this about Monty Jackson, this guy knows everything there is to know about music. I have never met anybody in my life who knows more about music than Monty Jackson. I mean, old music, not not like the, the, the new stuff. Yeah, well, that's not music. That's just, you know, people putting cats in a blender. Wow. That's what it is today. <laughs> it's all, it's all computer, all computer. Yeah, I know. It's, it's you know, with an auto tuner, I could be a pop star, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, but seriously. What's that? 
If that beard of yours, you will make great Buddha music. No, I, exactly. <laughs> right, board music. You know, I'll start, I'll perform with Yan Yan Yan. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They got the mountains, you got the beard. There you go. Exactly. No, but seriously, they, um, no, Tony, of course, Tony Bennett, you know, the original, he eight decades of performing and he first appeared on stage in 1949 and he just passed away yesterday or Friday. It's, that's an oh, unbelievable yeah. career. Wow. It's so sad. I, I, I've been watching lately. Uh, it keeps popping up on my stuff. Uh, Jimmy Swaggart, who's now uh, 88 years old, still preaching. He's sitting in his chair, uh, but he's still preaching there. And it's 70 years for him, more than 70 years for him in the in the business. That's that's amazing. No, it is amazing. I don't think I will grow, grow that old. I get one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this question. Can we get kind of a peek or, you know, uh, under the cover, like lift the bonnet up sort of thing on this album. Is 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 it is it Afrikaans pop? Is it country? Is it what what, what kind of music is coming out with this album? This is gonna be uh, because it, this Dennis is, which is my uh, my producer. He was actually a rock singer, hmm. um, yeah, a rock rock band, uh, uh, Stingray, and uh, so he was uh, the the record companies all forced him into. Doing going more country with me, and I'm uh, uh, since the COVID thing, I, I've uh, I break my ties with the record company, so I'm doing everything myself. So I, we do, me and him still, uh, we decided on a few songs we're going to do Wild Side of Life, but on a rock beat. Okay, it was a God who made honky tonk angels, so it's, it's going to be a nice thing. And uh, it's going to be, uh, there's a few uh, new songs that uh, my friends wrote for me. Uh, the, the country singer Alan Ladd wrote this uh, Afrikaans song. Uh, the Buddha music uh, guy, uh, Borsi Fisher, his brother wrote me a, a Buddha music song. And it's going to be pop. They're going to be country, ballads, a little bit of rock. Yeah. All right. So I'm it's going to be a little bit of everything, a bit of a mix. Yes, I'm doing a cover of uh, the... the uh, alternative guy from South Africa, you are a scarecrow. I'm not into that kind of music, uh, but I, I like the, the, the song. I like the song. Yes, if we change it. <laughs> I, I love everything about this song. Just change all the chords. <laughs> <laughs> and the lyrics. <laughs> so it's going to be something of everything. And as usual, uh, and all, all of my albums are, uh, enclose a, a gospel song on the end of the album, so that will be also there. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you, you and I talked previously, you know, um, people forget that Elvis was a huge gospel singer. Elvis Presley, he was amazing at yeah. gospel. Yeah, yeah he was. Um, I found a, 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 a cappella a version of him singing How Great the Art just a few weeks before he passed away. Wow. And you can hear there's no auto tuning. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just Elvis. You're a talent. Absolutely. Listen, we could talk for hours, but this is Crystal's time, so I'm going to push you off the stage. But before you... Before, I don't know anything before, about rugby. The before, last thing be, I remember you know, I was captain. Before you go, before you go though, Monty, just oh. let you know, uh, we're trying to set something up um, in Pretoria. I know it's a bit of a drive for you guys um, with Giselle <laughs> and myself. No, no, yeah, it's, but Giselle and myself uh, making an appearance. Um, you know, I'll let you know. You know, not to put you guys out, but you'd be welcome to come up to it. If you want to come up to it and want to be part of it, we could add you in. It's you know that sort of thing. But anyway, just letting you know, yeah. okay? Yeah, that's it's fine. Thanks, eh? All right, cheers. Thanks. Bye, Donkey. All right, okay. Get rid of that lug. Let's start talking rugby again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so predictions rugby world cup before you predict let me just run through a couple things okay so you hear my view of this so you can comment on it as well ireland is number one team in the world but that's by default in my view i've seen ireland's games where they got to number one and they played teams that were playing on not their best day whether it was the all blacks or the french or south africa all those teams played not their best game against ireland and not necessarily because of ireland so i i think no. ireland is a suspect number one and they're not going to win the world cup that's the first thing Number two, the All Blacks um, didn't demolish the Springboks. The Springboks didn't come out of the locker room for 30 minutes. So uh, the All Blacks are still suspect for me, too. They've got some gaps in their team. 
the uh, England, forget it. <laughs> Just forget it. England's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Australia, the Wallabies, you know, there was a lot of talk with Eddie Jones going back there because he's a miracle worker. Look what he did with Japan. Look what he did with, uh, he was with South African assistant coach. Look what he did when he's in Australia previously. Uh, the Wallabies were exposed. They are broken in so many ways. Um, I don't know if they come back from that in the World Cup. And then there's uh, France, the host. And people are like, France is going to win it. France is going to win it. To me, France is the team before this season. We that, before we're in this test season, France is the team that's played the best post-COVID. They've been the best, most consistent. And I think they're favorites. But, but if Jacques Nienaber gets the selection right, I'm picking the Springboks, even though they're in the... They're, they're going to play it in the... They're in the pool of death. They're in the pool of death. But that's what, so. What are your what are your thoughts on my, my predictions there and what I said? I I agree. I think we're going to have them in the final. That's what I think. I think we're going to have France in the final, and I think we're going to have a rerun of um, two thousand seven in France, just against France. Well, there you go. That was just a couple of players that would have liked, liked to. If you know, like you said, if we get the selection right, yep. and that's something we have to look at now. It's a raffle. It's like a raffle game putting everybody on on the field to see where they where they fit the best. But I think if we get the selection right and we get the brotherhood right and we get the the, the team spirit right, because even if you're not playing and you're in the the uh, the team, the uh, practicing team and whatever, and you're there, you have to be there for the Springbok. You have to be there for the game, for the, for the jersey. So I think everybody has to gel and then we'll have, we'll, we'll I think we'll beat them. Yeah. That's my prediction. No, I agree. I just I'm going to digress for a second. Hank Clubber's here. Hank, uh, I got Jacques Borger on Tuesday. If you're just tuning in, tomorrow Skulk Brits. Tuesday, Jacques Borger. Hank, all right, thank you. Um, so he got Skulk set up for me. Um, but Debbie Morey said that Monty did such an awesome tribute si uh, singing at Dylan Bothma's funeral. That 18 year old who died after his disappearance. Look, I mean, look, Monty is. Uh, look, I. I mean, you're 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 with the guy. That's you know. But I mean, you know, he is genuine. He's the real thing. Monty is such a nice guy. I hope he's off camera so he can't because his head will swell if he hears this. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but he's such a great guy. He's such, I mean, he does wonderful things. He actually cares, you know. He really puts effort into. It. I mean, uh, that, that that heartbreaking, you know, that that kid who had that that um, that um, the dwarfism condition or whatever it was. He, he sang with that kid and just made his, that, you know. I just he's such a such. He's a really good guy, Debbie. I agree with you hundred percent, Debbie. The thing is, he's got. He doesn't just have a talent. He's got a love for his talent, and that's the difference. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the guy knows everything. He's talking to me about music. I'm like, uh, wow. Who? I, what? Yeah, what? Dates. You know, he doesn't forget a date. Yeah. yeah. Dates. People people are born, uh, their date, what happened on a certain date, he's brilliant with that. Well, the dates I worry about most are making sure I pay my credit card bills and my mortgage every month on time. <laughs> those ones forget. <again. laughs> oh, he forgets those dates. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's talk about another player here. Um, one that um, when he first came to the team, I was like, who? Um, I don't know if this is going to work. And then he was lights out. And then this season, that was his first season at the team. This season, he ran through a patch where, oh my gosh, um, why is that guy playing rugby? He really can't kick the ball. And then he's just lights out. And that is Monty Lubick. Monty Lubick um, has thrilled and disappointed people, but mostly thrilled people. Um, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous if, with him at fly half, even though I'm a fan. The thing is that that's something I was thinking about earlier. He's so good on his good days. Yes. But then if it's too much pressure, too much. Remember, like I said, a pivotal role, you need to be so consistent in your decision making. So is he going to be exactly the same as in the first Wallaby game? Is he going to be the same, or is he is he going to waver something? Is is there something going to be so? It 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 also it, it concerns me. But I think if he's got the right um, backing, like let's say let's say they play him on on fly half, and he's got a a, a good half back, a good a fly, a good scrum off, um, that that uh, who can play with him. They can walk the. They can go. They can go through to the the final playing together all the time. It's going to be a good thing because you need to have one, um, <clears throat> someone to back you. The whole team has to back you. But if you have a, a like Victor Matfield and Marcus Puerta, they were the best slot uh, pair that you could 
the lockpick that you could get that you could find. Why? Because they knew each other so well. So I think if he if Marnie has a um a good a good backing, it's going to be good. But I think if they play him in different situations, in different positions, um, with different players each week, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, I think that's one of the challenges here. You've hit it nail on the head. But um, the thing is, again, when Monty is on, he is uh, Monty, Monty Libick, not Monty Jackson. <laughs> Monty Libick. When Monty is on, <laughs> he's he's brilliant. He, and that's when he came to the Stormers. I was like, wow. Um, I didn't know he was this good. And then had that rough patch. and like, oof, oof. Yeah, so we have to see. But um, a couple people are saying that he's too light to be a to be a fly half. Yeah, he's kind of light. Um, that's why it was kind of cool to see see Rua and Pinar step up from scrum half to play that 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 fly half because he was brilliant uh, for the Cheetahs. Yep. I really think Ron deserves a place in this team. I really do. Like I said, I don't believe in old legs because he's turning. Th- he's he's my age. We're thirty nine both. So it's not it's not easy playing against young players. But I really think he deserves a place in this team. I really think so. I think they will. I think they will. Um, they will take away from South Africa if they don't put him in the team, even if it's for 15 minutes as an impact player or to learn the young ones something. But he's. I think he's consistent in his play. Now there's 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 two question marks here, and uh, we keep being told on at least one of them that it's all going to be fine. He'll be back. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. But he's not going to have much playing time. And you come back from an injury, people tend to be tentative. I don't care how how much of a man you are. I mean, I've I've been injured and come back playing sports, and and you just it, it's in the back of your mind until you build some games. Yeah. So that the two question marks here are because Hank can't mention Andre Pollard, uh, Pollard coming back at fly half, and Sia Khaleesi, the team captain who's been out with a really bad injury. They, they keep telling us he's going to be fine. They keep saying he's going to be fine. What are your thoughts on that? I'm not sure about Khaleesi. I think um, I think his injury was he was out for so long. Hey, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if Khaleesi's going to make it. I don't know. But Pollard, I think he, he can bounce back pretty pretty well because he's had a few injuries, and when he's come back, he's come back a better player. So I think Andre we have. I, I'm not sure about Khaleesi. Yeah, no, I, I'm of the same opinion. I think we're being sold a bill of goods so that people don't panic yeah. about Sia Khaleesi being out. But look, I like Sia Khaleesi. <clears throat> of course, I famously did a, a video um, about Sia Khaleesi a couple years ago in which when he was talking about, um, you know, about you know how it was unfair he had to learn offer cons and the line outs and all that. And that's when all the yeah. people were like, I'm cutting up my Springbok jerseys. Remember that phase? Well, I did a video about that and I've got like 40 Springbok jerseys. So I stood in front of the camera here and I went through my jerseys. I'm like, well, you know, I'm not going to cut up my jersey collection because Sia Khaleesi. Anyway, but so I I got a lot. I got I got a hiding for that from a lot of people who called me a racist. Of course, what they neglected to do was look at the videos prior to that where I praised him when he performed well. I was I was complaining about uh, about, you know, that and also saying his captainship of the British and Irish Lions series was not particularly good. So. The thing about uh, Sia, so, I mean, I like him, um, but I honestly, you know, he is one of those players that he isn't on his game every time. When he's on his game, he's good. But I would say it's six, it's 40-60. 40% of the time, he's a great player. 60%, anybody can walk out there. And I'll tell you what, I would take Marco von Staden any day out there. <laughs> okay. Any day. But then I have to say, I'm not sure if I'm giving away the game now. Um, they might be feeding us a bunch of fairy tales or it might be the game plan saying that he's not going to play and then he plays one of his best games you never know because that's what i would do i would keep all my best players in in hiding and say listen no they're not no they're not good enough they're not fit and then the day of the play uh, of captain john i'll just say oops he's okay now we're gonna beat you so it might be one or the other i don't know well, but I don't say, think he's ready. Yeah, I don't think so either. But I, I tell you, you know, when it comes to the, uh, you know, the under 19s, under 20s, whatever, all those, the under 16s, under 19s, those groupings, I never really paid a whole lot of attention to that, which I should have done. But I mean, I didn't have access because I did, couldn't watch it, um, except when I lived in Africa. But one, the first player that I ever paid attention to in the under 19s that was just amazing was they won, they won the the World Cup under 19s, and that was Pollard when when he came up. Pollard. And so ever since then, I have liked Pollard. I followed him, um, but he's been inconsistent the past few years, and I, I'm hoping that he is back from this injury and he is the Andre Pollard that we know. 
that we know, yeah. And the thing is, um, I think he's the only one from that under twenty squad or under twenty one squad from the that played that well that has made it this far. I think and you're he's right. still con- Yeah, he's the only one, and I think I take my hat off to him for that because he could have played for any other union or and he, he, like just now he gets backlash because. He's not always consistent. So he could have played, but he kept on going. So I think we have a chance of having him on par. I hope so, because he's a brilliant player. But if he's not on par, then we have a problem. I think the one thing many rugby fans in South Africa can agree on is that Elton Yankees, are you serious? Why are you bringing him back? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you all? I have, to, I have to admit, there was a time a short time that he was a very good player. He was a great super rugby player, but he was a terrible yeah. test player. That's the thing. He was, that's why I say, just specialize your player in where he's good at. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say he's not a good player because he is a good player. Yeah. But I don't think under pressure. Agreed. I don't think he's good under pressure. Under pressure, his kicks curve away from the post. <laughs> <laughs> he's not good under pressure. They do, but but he is intense. I mean, uh, you know, Yankees is an intense player. You know, he also plays with his heart. He he plays yeah, with his heart he and his sleeve, and that's, that's a good thing. Uh, the fact that he makes mistakes, everybody makes mistakes, but the, but the fact that he makes more mistakes than anyone else, I think, has a lot to do with the fact that he's got in his mind, I can't make this mistake, I can't make this mistake, I can't make because he plays with his heart. So I think that's that's sometimes a good thing and a bad thing. A few years back when he was injured, the, the, I think he was playing for the Sharks then, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, the, uh, I was at Loftus, and um, I was walking um, where the food areas are up behind the stands on the west side of the stadium. And I was looking down at my phone, checking a message, and I noticed, because you're in South Africa, you pay attention when things happen around you, right? Even though you're on your phone, if you're yeah. smart. And I started to notice that like, people start like, coming up around, you know, like a crowd was getting up. I thought, maybe I'm walking too slowly. And I look over, and who's walking next to me in a boot? It's Elton Yankees, because he wasn't playing that game, but he was at the stadium. <laughs> he's walking right next yeah. to me. <laughs> but like I said, I think he's, I think he's, um, I think he's, he's mind over matter, yeah. and I think his mind is always busy, and that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, I think that's a fair statement. So let me go back to the Wallabies test because I want to say something about a couple players that I just gave incredible marks to in my post-game analysis when I did the play-by-play and color commentary. And that is guys who really stepped up in the game. Dwayne Vermeulen stepped up, was amazing. Marco Funstaden, we've talked about, uh, who is an underrated player in my view, and he was just lights out. I mean, that kind of performance is what a World Cup winning team needs from a player in that position. And then the other guy who was just lights out, a guy I've never been sold on because he seemed inconsistent to me. Maybe I just was overly harsh, you know, because uh, he's not the prettiest looking fellow, is Andres Esterhuizen. You know, that guy was just unbelievable. He's not the pre- – come on, he's not the best looking oak out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think he's, as you say, say, underrated, but I don't think he's made a mark yet. Hmm. I think he made his mark in this game. Yeah, I agree. And I don't think he's had enough eyes on him to see. Because if you go back to his play, to whatever he did before, if you go back to his games, you're going to see he's really on par. He just never realized the way he played until the game of the. Well, and Charles, Charles Van Onsen just made a very good comment. He said he was he, he was class. He said he was he's really improved since he went overseas. Back to your argument earlier yeah. about players getting exposed yes. to different types of the game, different styles of the game, become back a more complete player. No, he's he I, man. I'll tell you what. That was a joy to watch from Eulen step up the way we know Dwayne from Eulen to be. To see Marco van Staden come of age, so to speak, in a test match, yeah, and then see the I, it was incredible. That was. I mean, look. I mean, I'm very look. I'm. I don't. I don't cover over the mistakes. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't play that game of well. You know, everybody did a nice job. You know, then I, I. I'm not a super sport commentator. I'm not going to say everybody did a great job. I'm going to be honest. And you know, and oops, <clears throat> she's choking a little bit there. So let her take care of that. Uh, Damien De Allende has some. Yes. Um, yes. Damien De Allende is uh, not 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 been impressed as of late. A little disappointed. Damien De Allende. Not sure what's going on there. Um, Esther hasn't plays great games for Harlequins. Yeah, he does, Hank. That's well stated there. Um, I rate Om, um, though. Okay, we got to talk about those two. Um, let's make sure that um, that she's okay. She comes back here in a second there. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're talking with uh, Crystal Jackson. Um, and um, we had Monty Jackson on his camera. Oh, a little bit. That's okay. I had to cough. 
No, it's okay. All right. I just want to make, <laughs> make sure you weren't having a heart attack there. I was going to call. You know, I, I um, listen, I'll tell you, if, if you had a health emergency, I wouldn't call emergency service. I'd get on my phone and call Monty and say, go in their bedroom and talk to her. <laughs> oh. Yeah, just a cough. Okay. So so let's – um, so I, we agree. Those guys were all lights out. They were amazing. Uh, Esther Huizen is making a case. Marco von Staden sold his right to be on this team in that game. Um, it, hopefully it's not a one-off. I don't think it is. I watched him with the Bulls this season, and he's got that form. So it looks good. Um, but then uh, let's see. Uh, two more guys we haven't talked about. One is the absolute – um, arguably the best in the world in his position. The other people are starting to make the argument that he's posted. And I'm talking about Lucan Yuam and Makazoli and Pimpi. Of course, Mapimpi is the one that people are saying is past it. What are your thoughts? No, I think Mapimpi is coming back. Okay. I think the best players in the world. <clears throat> the, uh, Lucan, I'm not sure. I'm really? on the bench. Really? really? That's the opposite of what a lot of people are saying. Yeah, I'm on the bench. Because you have... Let's say, I think he's in a prime, and it's going to go away. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. But Mpimpi is coming back. Well, Hank agrees with you. Hank Kloper says Mpimpi's coming back. Um, and, and some people, yeah. to be fair, some analysts said that the reason Mpimpi didn't shine is that he had no opportunity. He never had the ball. No opportunity. Did he get the ball? No. Yeah. Well, but he, he did, didn't he knock it on on a high ball once at least? <laughs> yeah, but it was once. Remember, you have to play the game. That's true. Every object. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'll tell you what. They, they cannot against any foe, whether it's Japan, Samoa, USA, Chile, Portugal, All Blacks, or England, France. They cannot play defense the way they played in that All Black game. That was, that was oh, that was an embarrassment. Uh, the thing is, I think they have to have a game plan. That's why I believe in a game plan. When you go and you, um, they they teach you how to coach. You have to uh, have a team for six months, and you have to give every game plan. So why is there a game plan if you don't follow it or you don't use it? That's why I think Rossi is so. Um, uh, everything he does is so he, he does it so well because he does it according to a plan. That's why he started this Verusco uh, analyzing thing because he analyzed every uh, part of the game. That's how he knows it. So you, as a player, has to analyze your opponent. You can't just sit back and um, that's what I believe. I think they have to have video sessions. I have to have uh, uh, just as much as they have. Um, sprinting sessions and uh sessions on the field because you need to know what you're up wh what you're up against and you need to know how to sidestep it and without that you won't be able to do it and that's why they need me in the team of course <laughs> there you go they need you <laughs> in the front office or up in the booth up there yeah which uh that, <laughs> Uh, that that booth for the Sharks says is turning out not to be as exciting as they thought it was. The former Sevens coach now with the Sharks, uh, yeah. uh, he's, he's yeah. finding that front office is challenging. It can be challenging. Well, listen, you know the Bulls. Um, obviously, I believe uh, you are a Bulls fan, right? No. Ooh, you said no. Sharks earlier, didn't you? You said Sharks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, um, the Bulls. Let me. The, 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 yeah. So I'm not really a Bulls fan either. I'll follow them after other teams, but uh, but I'm definitely a, um, a a Stormers fan, but. The Bulls, a lot of a lot of um, hair pulling, teeth gnashing this season. A lot of anger and frustration at the Bulls' performance. They were inconsistent at best, atrocious at worst, and uh, a lot of people criticizing Jake White. But the front office said, "Nope, Jake's our guy. Be patient." The thing is, Jake is a specialist in what he does as well. If you take Montpellier, he took them from scratch, and what happened? All of the South, all the all. The, all the players we know can do the can win this game. He took and he, he put them in a, in Montpellier and they won. And he took a bad team and he made it a great team. He made it a brotherhood. So I think they have to give him a chance. And um, I think the the biggest thing is um, the the um, I wanted to say the Northern Transvaal, but that doesn't exist anymore. The bull the Bulls rugby union. The fans are so committed to their rugby uh, union that they get hurt so deeply when something goes wrong on the field. And that's where the balls get slaughtered because you're just the fan and you've got so much passion for this team of yours 
and when they lose or they do something there, then you are so sad and it's you feel it so deeply. I always say they're the best uh, <clears throat> apologies. They're the best rugby rugby supporters in the world because you where else will you find someone with a blue house? Mm. Not in Australia, not in America. Well, I but mean, you find look, it. I mean, I think expl- you know, um, I think that recognizing. Um, mental illness for painting your house blue to support the blues is not a good way to bring people into the game of rugby. <laughs> they are really good supporters, and I think that's why the Bulls get so much discretion because yeah. um, their fans are so loyal, and they are halfway on the on the field, and they want the team to be so good. And then sometimes there's something there's behind the scenes that you don't know about. There is structures that you have to work out. And I think um, like any other coach, like Rossi is doing now, it's a raffle. He's he's testing the waters. He's playing. He's it, it's been a it's been a rough year, but I think he's going to find his feet. Because if you look at him when he started before the 2007 World Cup, um, he started out, out rough, and then he got the team together and they won. Yeah, no, fair point. VP, you like a ding. So, that was subliminal. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> uh, no. but uh, listen, uh, you know, uh, people have been dissing for the past, uh, since before COVID, but especially since COVID came, people have been absolutely dissing the Curry Cup. And I take umbrage with that. I, I, I yeah. It's the oldest domestic rugby tournament on the planet. It's and so it, it's great. I love Curry Cup. And then the Cheetahs won it perfectly. Yeah. And then last and year, then, the, the Pumas won it. I was heartbroken because I'm a Griquas fan when it comes to that. Yeah. yeah. And and the thing is, the Pumas, they stepped up. They they deserved to win that game because they stepped up. They were in that game for 85 minutes, not 80 minutes. And that's the thing that – and then the other thing that we have to remember is sometimes South Africa's not an 80-minute game, not an 80-minute team. And that's what we need to remember because it's an 80-minute game. Hmm. Are you talking about that's the Springboks? Yeah. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, look. You, 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 no, the, thing, the older man. The thing about the when you man. play the you play the All Blacks, you're not playing an 80 minute game. You're playing a game playing where like your foot is minutes. on their throat until the final whistle that's from the official. Thing, and that's why I think the older. The, like I said, I'm, I don't really believe in old uh, old legs because it's harder on, on their bodies than on the youngers. But uh, I think that's where the change is going to come in. Hmm. If they do the selection and they take the experienced guys, I, I have five on my hand, that I think they can really make a difference, even if they only play 15 minutes of each game, because that's going to make the difference. It's going to be new legs. It's going to be experienced legs. It's going to be uh, people that doesn't uh, get it intimidated easily, especially in the last 15 minutes of a game where you need to turn over a game, maybe. So I think that is what we need. Yeah, no, I agree. I really think it's sad. It's sad that they won't, if they don't choose uh, three or four that I agree with, I think it's going to be a bad one. Well, let's 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 shift our focus to Scrum Half. Um, you know, everybody loves to hate on Fof de Klerk. Um, me too, sometimes. Even though I like Fof, but sometimes I just want to choke him. So uh, everyone loves to hate uh, Fof de Klerk. Then, of course, Jaden Hendrickson, who's Hendrickson has been brilliant, but is out injured now. Grant Williams, also with the Sharks, uh, along with Jaden, is uh, really impressed. He impressed this season in URC, and he looked really polished out there on the pitch. What are your thoughts about Grant Williams? Uh, some people are asking about that. Um, I think he's. I think he's a great player. I just don't know. He did a great job for the Sharks. I just don't know. Is he going to do the same under, uh, under pressure? Is he going to do the same for the for his country? Because mm. that's something we have to think about. Yeah. Uh, is he mentally ready for that? And before you use him, make sure. Because otherwise, you're going to take a, a brilliant player <clears throat> from his union that don't, didn't have any faults or something that you had discretions against him you're going to put him in a, in a, a springbok team he's going to play he's going to make a mistake and you're going to lose all your respect for a guy who's got a great play but had a bad day or was nervous and that's my problem i don't think i think they should uh before if they want to put him on they should give him a lot of confidence before beforehand no i think it's a fair point um okay so um 
Oh, there was another point I want to get to here very quickly here. Oh, yeah, here you go. What's your biggest shock non-selection for this team? Which player you think wasn't picked deserves to be there? And, and you can even, if you want, say who they should be there over. I've got mine. I want to hear yours. So we... I'm gonna, I'll hear you, you, you okay, yours okay. first. All right. So my I'm biggest talking. shock non-selection is Leyland Zoss. Leyland Zoss is a firecracker. The guy scored more tries than anybody else in his first season in Super or in URC competition, and he was injured this year and still was unbelievably impressive. He's back from the injury. The fact that Leyland Zoss has not been selected for this Springbok team disturbs me. And um, while I like Kane and Moody, he does have fumble fingers, a la Vili LaRue at times, and um, Kane and Moody has also made some questionable decisions on which way to run. He runs into traffic instead of away from it. But he's a great player. I like him. He's got a lot of great future. But Leyland Zoss, man, the fact that he's not there, I'm like, what, what are these people smoking? Do they know something I don't know? I agree. I agree with you 100%. And I think if they gave him a chance, because at this stage, my opinion about it is they think he's going to just do exactly the same that most people do. They are good in their union, and then they come – Back and they just like Billy Larue on a good day. It's good. He's good. But I think if you give him a chance, he's going to be good in every game. And that was something I just couldn't. I I, I just wasn't sure. My, my, this is my opinion. I wasn't sure if he was if he was selected. That I was on the bench about that. And then I was shocked about Ruan Pinar. Yeah, and that yeah. was my, okay, my Roy, big. No, Ruan Pinar would be great too. Yeah, no, it's um. It's, uh, we'll see. I mean, we've got these test matches coming up. I presume you'll be watching all these games. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be a little hard, yeah. I'll be a little hard pressed for the first game because I'm at the netball world cup this weekend. You said you were there, y'all. Yeah. yeah. I'll be going to the netball world cup this weekend. And that game is on Saturday. Netball world cup ends at 6 PM. I think the spring box game starts at five. So I'll probably be listening on the radio as I drive down to Somerset West. <laughs> The, the thing about this game is it's it's um we can we we're coming back from a loss um the first game was uh brilliant and now we're coming back from a loss a bad loss and uh this controversy and it's um we're playing Argentina and they they they, they are consistent they they're not the best players in the world but they're consistent in their play and they're consistent in the team so I'm um, a bit on the bench. I don't know what we're going to do. And I think selection is very, very, very important in this game. You have to go and analyze which player is going to be best against the next one. Because one slip of it, it's going to be it's going to be the same as last week, except yeah. for the 30 minutes in the locker room. Well, listen, I think we could probably agree on this. Um, it's okay to experiment. It's okay to get the right players and figure out. I mean, is, is Jesse Creel going to get a slot? You know, you got to you got to deal with yeah, that. Get some. Got this as well. Yeah, get some playing time for Lukanyu Am, who's come back from injury. That's all fine and dandy. But I think we could probably agree that a poor performance or, God forbid, a loss to the Pumas, and suddenly the Springboks World Cup chances, people will start second-guessing second, uh, second everything. Go down. The ranking's going to go down. So I think they have to think it's, we're on, it's, it's Sunday today. I think they have to go and take a very fine look at what opposition, because the Pumas will be probably uh, naming their team Tuesday. And I will wait. I will, if I was them, I would wait until Thursday and check out that. I will do my research and see who is going to be um, man. I want I want to say this, man enough to play this game. Because you have to play this game absolutely for 80 minutes. Yeah. You have to play it. Because the Pumas are going to come out raving. They're gonna rave, and no, no matter what you say, you've come from a very bad loss. So, what are they gonna do? Well, they're gonna absolutely on all our, all our. They're gonna um, go on all our mistakes. They're gonna play for penalties. They're gonna. That's what they're gonna do. Yeah, no, they definitely will do that. Um, Charles Van Onselen said Grant Williams is super, super quick. He is, and his 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 passes are crisp. I'll give him that. I mean, you know, he's, I didn't hear the name. Oh, uh, Charles Van Onselen says that Grant Williams uh, oh. is super, super quick. Grant, yeah, he is, absolutely. and and his and his passing is is very. I mean, as a scrum half, he gets the ball where it's supposed to go. You know what? That's one thing that I wanted to say earlier, but I forgot about it. Do you remember Freddie Michalak? Yeah. That guy could pass, and I think every scrum half, especially a scrum half, because you are not supposed to get out of a ruck and look around for your first receiver. You just pass for it. 
You need to know he's going to be there. You need to feel it. That's why years ago they had that Dr. Carroll. If you look at um, Australian and, and uh, New Zealand rugby, they don't look uh, back to see where the ball's coming from. They just catch it there because they know it's coming. And I think when you have someone like that who can pass that way, he's not afraid to know the next player is going to be there. And that's what it's about. Yeah, that that's that's how the All Blacks have been in the past. You know, Richie McCall days, Always. you know, that's how they were. Always. I mean, you know, you, you see an All Black player offloading and there's no one there and a player runs right there's into no, the ball. They, you know he's going to be there because yeah. that's how, but that's rugby. That's not just Australian or um, New no. Zealand rugby. That's rugby overall. We yeah, just yeah. need to get it. So eight years from now, Will we be having a conversation about uh, currently Arnsay being the all-time try scorer for the Springboks? Now, I may be putting the horse before the cart. That's a lot of games. That's a lot of test matches. I've also I've also lowered the rate because there's no way he can sustain getting 10 tries in nine games and duplicating that over 20, 30, 40 games. But be realistic with his ability, his moves, his 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 ability to evade tacklers. Uh, and just find the try line. It's uh, will we be having a conversation that Kurtley Arnsay, if he stays healthy and gets the opportunity, will be the top try scorer all time? I think we will. Think so? Absolutely, I think so. And I think he will be the next uh, record holder above uh, Brian Habana. Absolutely. You know, the thing about Habana is when Habana would turn on the afterburners, it looked like an actual jet or a hot rod zipping down the raceway. Yeah. It really did. Yeah, it, yeah. With Kurt Lee, he, he, he's, he's, I'm sorry. Go ahead. He read the game. He read the game absolutely. He knew where to go, when to do it. He 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 knew when to stay out of the way. He knew that, that when it wasn't his ball, he knew he knew when it wasn't his try. And I think this is what um, <clears throat> we've got. Um, so um, he knows when to go and score the try, and he knows when to make the try because there's that's that's also a try. So I think that's what we've got. So in eight years, we will definitely be talking about this. I think that um, with Brian Habana, something that um, not a lot of people I've ever heard comment, I've heard a few people say it, and, and I came to this conclusion before I heard it, but he seemed to have a great anticipation for where the game was going. Yeah, he read it. He read it absolutely. He knew exactly. Yeah. And I think it's it's to say that's why we can do the um, the conversation in eight years because that's what's that's, that, that's what's coming. And I think if you have that, I don't th I don't think we just certain players who has that ability i think everyone has i just think that um some players focus on that they focus on the game they don't focus on last night roast in the oven or whatever uh they focus on what they're doing now all right um uh, next three test match gonna wrap up here shortly um next three test match uh we got uh, argentina ellis park then argentina in argentina as a warm up for the World Cup, and then the All Blacks at Twickenham. Okay, give me your score and prediction for those three games. Ellis Park I'm against the Pumas. I'm not good at scoring at all. I think, and let me let me say, I think we're going to go on penalty. That's what we're, we're going to do because we've got, yeah, I think we're going to go on penalty. And um, uh, the Pumas in Argentina, I don't know. I think I don't think we're going to make that one because it's far. It's a different continent. <laughs> The traveling is already. You, you only get two days to train, and if he's if we win this game, the the next test against the Pumas, and he's consistent with that team, they might win. Okay. The one in Argentina. All right. Uh, otherwise, the one and uh, the last game, I'm not sure because I don't know if we're going to stay in the in the locker room or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. The locker rooms for visiting teams are nicer at Twickenham, so they might get comfy in there. But <laughs> no, so listen, uh, okay, so so here's my predictions. Um, Ellis Park, Springboks, 41 or 43 to 22, okay? They win. Why? Why do you say that? Why? Well, why? because um, why? they can't afford to lose. This is It's, it's not a do or die sort of thing. And also, I think yeah. the selections are going to be made are going to be the right selections. Uh, I'm guessing, but I mean, when the selections come out, then I'll have to readjust. But right now, I say they win. Well, I say they win decisively. If we go to Argentina with the intent of winning, not simply experimenting, we win. But we don't win by big. We win by a try or ten points, yeah. but we win. Yeah. At Twickenham, yeah, no, if we don't win, we better put on a damn good show and lose because yeah, it's a tight game. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. this World Cup is in jeopardy. Let's, for... not, let's, not win, 
30 or 50 zero. Let's let's yeah. win. No, but or I mean, lose, if, if, we lose, yeah. if we go to Twickenham <laughs> and we lose, but it's like you know 31 29, it was close, you know, then then we then can, we can we'll survive that. that. Yeah. But if we go yeah, to Twickenham we can... and we lose 38 to 7, then yeah, mentally, be, uh, mentally, the Springboks yeah, are trying. Yeah, and it's and they're going to have an advantage for the rest of the World Cup. Yep, yep. Um, Grant Williams reminds me of a young Devon uh, Serfontaine. Um, yeah. No Paul. Yeah. Really, it does. He does me as well. Well, I, you know, guy always like guy always like back in the day was Jan Serfontaine. I always thought he was a great player. I thought he didn't get his. his... Yeah, um, and he's he's still playing for Montpellier. If, if I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, he is. I think he is because I. I I looked recently and I was sorry. Because for not calling him up. Well, yeah, he's that's, a brilliant. I agree. I mean, I don't know how he fell out of favor with 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 sorrow. You know. The thing I wanted to say uh, that that I couldn't understand because he's a brilliant player. Yeah, I agree, and he didn't get a fair shot with the Springboks, in my view. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Well, Crystal, uh, look, um, it sounds like we could talk for hours on this subject, but it's been fun. And you, you, yeah. find, you finally came on. We finally got you on here. You stopped being selfish. You take care of yourself. Something <laughs> <laughs> sick. Yeah. So, so um, did you enjoy this conversation? I really enjoyed it. I loved it. Um, I, feel, I feel, actually, I feel better than I did before. Oh, that's cool. Because that makes that's a, that's a thing. Rugby is my life. It really is. It, it's something I love with all of my heart. And it's something that most people don't get because they think I'm just a dumb blonde. And I just want to stand in stand between all the guys. Really, I don't. I just want to be in the game. I just want to read behind the lines and um, enjoy something that God gave us to enjoy. Well, listen, but I'm, glad, I'm glad that you feel better. I'm glad I was able to help. Um, I do take medical aid payments, so here's your bill. Okay, you do. <laughs> Let me just give you my medical aid card. <laughs> anyway, but seriously. All right, well, uh, Crystal, always a pleasure. Um, I, I'll send you guys some updates of what my schedule looks like for Hao Tang when I'm there. It's just a little over a week, so it's tight. But um, maybe we can link up, hopefully, and maybe we, we get Donnie Van der along, too. We'll see. But um, if not, we'll definitely I'll, I'll keep you updated on where we're going. So thank you so much. Any final thoughts about the, the Springboks or the World Cup? And then we'll wrap it up. You're on. You've got the floor is yours. I think, I think if we if we if we um, pay less attention to what Rossi says in the media, because he's just he's I think he's just uh, creating a. a an illusion so that a distraction that's what he's doing with his mouth so i think if we pay less attention to what he says and more attention to what he does and we believe in him and in the team and the selection we can win this world cup and rossi will be one of the uh the coaches who does it twice in a row and i think if we if he chooses a few old players like we just reminded him of um, we might make he might might make history again, and they might get the last chance. All right, that's uh, well stated. All right, folks, uh, Crystal Jackson here with us talking rugby, Springboks, and, and we touched on some other things too, URC, Curry Cup. But uh, thanks a lot, Crystal. Always a pleasure. Bye, bye, donkey. Good bless you. Thank you so much. It was an honor, and right. safe travels. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll I'll either see you or be in touch with you shortly. <laughs> okay. Great stuff. All right. Thanks, I'll, Chris. I'll I'll let Have you drop I'll let you drop off, and I'll wrap up the broadcast. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You're welcome. You Bye as well. Bye, guys. Hey, thanks a lot, folks. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I know I enjoyed it immensely. It's fun to talk rugby. It's a Sunday. Why not talk rugby? We didn't have a game this weekend to focus on. So there you go. Um, thanks for your comments and questions. A lot of good comments over here as far as player selection and, and also questions for Crystal. Thank you all so much for that.